here we're going to look at a totally different kind of backing up situation and we're going to do the whole thing in slow-mo. So we're starting again with a relaxed horse, but she does a little bit initially of just raising the head without shifting the posture. Now I already have a plan for her at this point of backing in a left bend to start or on a left curve. So as she started to brace, I shifted her weight to the right. Now we're thinking backwards again. As her head comes up there, I take some of the slack out. It's not about pulling her backwards. I want to take the slack out to help show her the shape that we're after or help guide the shape. Here she starts to lift up and start to find some better answers. You could say she's starting to coil the spring, although there's also times that her hind legs step too narrow. They, it would be ideal if for every stride they were staying wider on those train tracks. Now we're just zooming in so we can see as we get farther away. So she has to be able to open that right front at times to make her way around the circle. Ideally, every single step would be exactly the same, but it's not a perfect world, so there's times that we have to correct some things. Like there, she was more in the left. We had to shift a little extra to the right to get back on track and get back to balanced. Now, there's certainly moments where here I would say the neck is crunched up, and that is not what we want. Being a part Frisian horse, this horse definitely can bring that very long neck, very vertical. I try my best to not pull her backwards. That's all we can do is try our best not to pull them backwards. Even if there is no backwards, are there times that the horse might push forwards into your hand? Is that still crunching? Yes. Did I pull backwards to create it? No, not necessarily. Here she started to really shift. You can see the, the hawks start to get a little lower. We're squatting a little bit deeper. Oh, we get a little stuck. Trying to encourage her to lengthen the neck, but still stay in that posture there. She starts to find it again. She had started to spill forward. Here's that crunchy neck. We don't love it, but does it happen? It does sometimes happen. Gonna give her a tickle behind to bring some awareness out of her head and into the back of her body. There we start to think about redistributing that weight. She's starting to approach the corner here and she's a little bit glued to the fence, so I'm trying to help her maintain that curve on the circle. Remember, we were trying to do a circle. Once she had the fence next to her, she was a little bit glued there and getting a little extra sticky. If you look closely here, she uncrunches the neck a bit, and it's not because I pushed my hands forward. It's because she rocked her weight out of the chest a little bit and loaded the haunches or coiled the springs, you could say. So as she made that shift within her own body, we go ahead and just say, yep, that was it, exactly. She released her own brace there, not without my help, but not because I just said, oh, this is getting hard, let's give her the reins back. I want her to learn that the release isn't there just when I let go of the reins. The release is within her control, within her body, at all times. If she doesn't know how to get there, that's what we can talk about. We can use our aids to show her the postures that help her find the release and that better way of feeling and going within her body.